Hello, everybody, and welcome to Take the Stairs. Um, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you listening. Um, I'm Grant. Um, and I'm Grant. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you listening. Uh, so please give us a follow on Twitter at Take the Stairs Podcast or email us at Take the Stairs Podcast at gmail.com. Um, we'll be posting new stories um, throughout the week on Twitter and uh, talking about when the podcast will go live and all on Twitch. So, Trey, what are you drinking today? Well, you know, I got uh, some high quality H2O. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, going to water tonight. Hydrating yeah, this just evening. water. Yep. Trey is demonstrating exceptional uh, professionalism today because he is on vacation with his family and is still here getting the podcast done i am am. gotta do what you gotta do yep (laughs) yep respect it respect the grind for sure um (laughs) i am drinking some red wine cabernet sauvignon uh it's called juggernaut and yeah so Uh i actually uh had it last week um go check (laughs) out the first episode um and uh yeah how you doing Everything good? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Um, been playing golf a lot. Oh yeah, how's that going? Hitting the range. Um, you know the range is going really well, and then I go out to the course, and uh, <laughs> it gets a little rough. <laughs> Definitely. Um, um, I feel like when you go go to the range, it's like just like a PGA pro. Mm-hmm. And then whenever you're like on the tee box, it's just horrible. Everything you did on the range just goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love the range because it's so mellow. You just get in the grind, you know. And then the big thing for me was I played that par three again, mm-hmm. and uh, I shot forty five this time. Um, so oh, I added like what I did. Yeah. I know I added um, like eight strokes so literally like a, a whole stroke for every hole almost yeah. and it was, it was it was the putting for me the putting was awful oh really because your putting yeah. last time was like really good i know like you were i mean you had like a, i mean i don't think you really had any three putts so no. you're you know up and down a lot of the time so that was really good and mine was yeah i had a lot of three putts so was that yeah. kind of what you were doing this oh summer? yeah it was horrendous yeah it was brutal and then uh other than that i uh i hiked uh grandfather mountain today oh really today yeah yeah, yeah today so, yeah it was had, uh, it was fun we had completely different lifestyles today then because i had sat on the beach <laughs> for four hours and did nothing <laughs> yeah yeah so it's the vacation <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's good yeah it's good yep water wasn't freezing cold today so that was nice <laughs> outer banks can be uh really cold sometimes especially up north in north carolina so it was nice it was like 73 today so felt pretty good yeah yeah that is cool yeah i'm looking forward to our trip in august it'll be nice and warm yes yes it's gonna be so fun yeah it'll be nice to get away again oh yeah it's always fun to come down here yeah all right so let's dive into uh the topics all right. And I, I think we got to start with what's on everybody's mind. NBA Finals. Of course. We have a world champion. That's crazy. And it is the Milwaukee Bucks. What do you think? It, oh, my. I mean, like, just for them, I mean, what blows my mind, obviously Giannis is insane, but we'll talk about that. But the fact <laughs> that they won four games in a row, like they were down two, like, they lost two games at the beginning, and they won four in a row. Is like it's so impressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anybody saw that coming, really. Um, but it, it was beautiful. That it, it was such a great finals, and I mean, just Giannis is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! Fifty bomb in game six, like bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean so. 50 points, obviously, that alone is just yeah. ridiculous. 
But then on top of that, he had five blocks. Um, let's see here. He had five blocks, 14 rebounds, two assists. He went 16 from 25 uh, from the field. I mean, he played 42 minutes. Yeah, so he I shot mean, 60%, get, got 50 points. I mean, yeah, the, the blocks he had, dude, they were like – they they weren't like small blocks either. He was like swatting people. <laughs> no, everyone was a top play of that highlights of the final yeah. series. You know, it's yeah. like, Jesus Christ. It's, yeah, there, game, well, it was a game five. He had the um block on Aiton, right? Yes, the, he had that game winning block, and then immediately after that, he had that insane alley oop. Dude, yeah, that was like the same like like yeah. right after. Yeah, 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 holiday. Yeah, that was awesome. Was that like was insane. Crazy. Yeah, that made that made the highlights. That's like one of the top plays for sure. And yes, then, I mean Yeah, I mean obviously Giannis is this monster and uh you know, we were texting last night talking about, you know, every player of the decade. So uh yeah, you wanna explain that? Oh yeah, so I just said like, you know, Jordan's the player of the nineties. And then Kobe's got the 2000s, got five rings Mm -hmm. in the 2000s. And then LeBron, 2010s, he went off all that decade. And now Giannis, I mean, 2021, he's already got one. He's got, he's a two MVP. He's got two MVPs and he's already won a championship. And he's 26 years old, I think. It's insane. I mean, I think he's about to go off this decade and he's going to be the next guy of the NBA. Yeah, I mean, I... I think you're definitely going to be right. I mean, he, it, this is definitely his decade, and he's going to make his mark on it for sure. And I think the similarities between the Bucks and the uh, the, the Bulls, uh, more in the 80s than in the 90s, you know, the Bulls were this franchise nobody really gave a shit about. Yeah. And, uh, and then they got the star player who turned them around after a couple of years. And, you know, Giannis is the same exact way. Him and Chris Middleton have been at the Bucks for eight years, and – have been uh, getting after it, and now they turned this shitty franchise into world champions. So, yeah, fifty years since they've they've won anything. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty awesome for Milwaukee and everything. Did you see the uh, like the crowds outside of the arena? Oh my that god, they kept showing it was insane. There's like thousands of people just yeah standing outside and like I, Milwaukee is definitely cool. I mean, it's summertime, but still, I mean, <laughs> you know. Like the conditions can't be good. They're out there for three hours. <laughs> I know least. that it was like fifty degrees. You know, it's livable. Yeah, that's not bad. But, <laughs> but I yeah, I get like, you saying. That's. I mean, you could be at home, and all these people. It's just, and it's insane. They're so excited. Like it's just, it's got to be crazy for Milwaukee right now to get that championship. Yeah, I mean, cool. I remember Game Five. Uh-huh. We were texting about how crazy the Phoenix crowd was and how loud it was in there. Yeah, I cannot imagine what it was like game six in that arena because you know you could hear all those people outside uh-huh yeah and i mean that just had to sound like a fucking earthquake dude yeah i mean well, there were multiple times where there was like a foul call and they blew the whistle you couldn't hear it yeah it was so loud yeah, yeah i mean you literally couldn't hear the whistle from the yeah. ref it, it was ridiculous yeah that was a beautiful atmosphere uh I was, it was really cool to see the whole city uh get into it like that um, yeah some stuff for sure i thought it was hilarious how the owners were the first ones that touched the trophy did you oh, see really? that no see actually so last night right after it ended i was like zonked i was so tired <laughs> <laughs> so i w- went to bed after so i actually didn't see the ceremony or anything mm-hmm. um, so t- tell me what happened because i missed it uh, i mean uh, listeners i hope you all saw this because I just thought it was ridiculous. I mean, so whoever was presenting the trophy, you know, it was was, uh, some reporter, you know, and then she introduced uh, Adam Silver, and then, you know, Adam Silver presents the trophy. Well, nobody comes up to pick it up. Like, Giannis hasn't come up to get it. The coach hasn't come up to get it. Chris doesn't come up to get it. And so out of nowhere, these three old white guys I've never seen in my life, Walk up, 
and they each pick up the trophy and like pass it to each other while the team's just hanging out in the back. And then eventually the reporter comes on and it's like, oh, these are the owners of the Bucks, which Aaron Rodgers was not there. Um, <laughs> oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> I know. I would, I would like to see him, him holding <laughs> that shit, but. Um, <laughs> But then eventually, yeah, eventually they give it to the coach, but it was just so weird. It was like, what are you doing, guys? Like, you didn't yeah, win this strange. shit. Normally it yeah. goes straight to, like, you know, Giannis, you're the coach. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, or Middleton, you know, some guy, mm-hmm. that, you know, they're star. That's that's so weird. It's like, that's strange. Yeah, it was so weird. I It just, <laughs> you got to watch it. YouTube it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll watch it. And that's watch crazy. it, because it's just so cringy. Uh, and nobody knows who these guys are. It's not like they're Mark no, Cuban. No, no, no. no you one, know? I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, there's very few owners who are widely known. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. But, you know, another cool thing about the Bucks is just the complete talent around the team. Um, mm-hmm. Like, obviously, Chris Middleton, you know people were talking about how he was in possible contention for finals MVP. Well, Giannis shut that shit down game six. Um, But a lot of people were talking about that, how he was in contention um, for finals MVP uh, leading up to that. And then also, you know, you have Drew Holiday, who's widely considered to be one of the best defenders uh, in the league. Um, So, yeah, I I just thought it was really cool, um, the whole team and how they got it done. Yeah, group effort. It's always a group effort for winning a championship. Because, I mean, the NBA is like, you know, you can't, I mean, so you have a lot of, like, all-stars and superstars in the NBA, but obviously if you're going to win something that big, you got to have a lot of guys around you. I mean, Brooke Lopez, the center, I mean, he had, you know, some big plays too during the game. And then Bobby Portis, game six, he, like, had, like, 15 minutes minutes i mean he only gets like 15 minutes a game and he had like over 15 points i mean he was awesome and he was bringing the crowd into it he was so electric Mm -hmm. and like exciting and the crowd like milwaukee loves bobby portis Mm -hmm. and just hyping up the crowd and everything so i mean yeah i mean everybody on that team yeah i mean portis played great connaughton pj tucker um, yeah i I mean just absolute studs all around everybody yeah Yeah. dude pj tucker he will not leave anyone alone like him and like you know Patrick Beverly, th- those guys, they're all like, they will not leave you. They're just a nuisance on the other team. Yeah. Like, I think it might have been game four, game five. PJ Tucker had like like 20 minutes, no points, nothing. But, <laughs> but he was just like, he'll annoy you so much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he like, still makes his mark. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. He'll just, he'll bother you. It's <laughs> get in your head and everything. Yeah. I mean, he's just that thick guy that, you know, he lays down the law. You know? Yep. I respect the grind. Um, or do anything he's gonna get in your head or mess with you yeah yeah for sure for sure and then um i know you said you didn't hear this um when we talked about it earlier but at the end of game five in the press conference uh devin booker and chris paul were right next to each other so they're sitting right next to each other and this reporter asked devin he asked him, how worried are you for Chris Paul's uh, like championship chances? What? And then Devin Booker, he just like kind of freezes for a second. He doesn't know what to say. And then Chris like looks at him like, what the hell? <laughs> and then uh, Devin's like, next question. Oh, really? <laughs> That's all he says. I mean, what are you going to say to that? I like... mean, for real, what kind of question is that? Yeah, I mean, so like... I would get maybe asking Chris Paul that, but he asked Booker that question? Yeah, yeah. He asked Evan Booker with Chris Paul right next to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And, I mean, just what the hell are you thinking? What are you trying to get out of that question, you know? Do you think he's going to be like, oh, no, our chances. I'm very worried for Chris. No. He's going to be like, Chris Paul ain't winning. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. He's right next to him. Like, those reporters are so stupid sometimes, I swear. I mean, for real. There's compilations on YouTube of like reporters asking stupid questions. It's hilarious. <laughs> They're just like it's the dumbest thing. Like one of the memes of Russell Westbrook, like the guys asking him, like, did did you guys lose what this one or did the other team win it? And Russell Westbrook's just like, 
what? I'm done with this. Like, get out of here. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> That's so funny. There's just so many dumb things they can say. It's like that's your job. Like, how are you got? How do you have these stupid questions? Yeah, that was, that was a fantastic on. one. Yeah. yeah, like, come on, guys, <laughs> do better. <laughs> but, I mean, but yeah, I have a great final series. I mean, just phenomenal. And that's really, uh, really all I got on that matter. I mean, I'm just, just excited to see Giannis yeah. uh, it's, keep yeah. on. I can't grinding. wait to see what what he does next like it's yeah it's gonna be great yeah i mean so, he'll only get better yeah i mean heck his free throw shooting percentage went up you know Dude, yeah he <laughs> shot like really well yeah um yesterday so it was cool for sure Mhm. well uh talking about the bucks you know aaron Rodgers is now a NBA champion. Um, <laughs> I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> but a lot of people are wondering what he's going to do in the NFL. So I know you said that you'd been looking into that. What you got on that? Yeah. So like he, so the Green Bay Packers offered him a contract. So I think it was only a two year contract, but it was massive. So it was like, you know, Mahomes like so it was only two years but they were going to give him like make him the most paid athlete in the NFL mm-hmm. like they were going to give him like 40 million or something like that and he turned it down yep. he was like no nah, I don't want it and then he made us like people were asking oh my gosh like how did you do that and he was like it's about making a statement like he's obviously upset with you know the organization and everything and you know he's it doesn't matter how much money they throw at him they got to fix What's going on over there? So, yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is ungodly wealthy, and uh, yeah, I mean, clearly the money doesn't matter to him, mm-hmm. and it is about the statement. He sees the power that you know Brady has and Mahomes have within their own organizations, and yeah, he wants that. He wants to be respected. Um, did <laughs> and yes, you're right about the two-year deal. It was an extension on his current three-year mm-hmm. contract, so it would have kept him five years there in Green Bay. Um, and then did you hear about his, uh, house cleaning controversy? I did not. What's that? So some cleaning company had an employee come out and say that, uh, they were paid to do a deep clean of Aaron Rodgers Green Bay home. And so now people are like, oh shit, he's getting his house deep clean because he's going to put it on the market or... Or because he hasn't been there in a couple of months, you know, he's getting a deep clean because he's coming back. Hmm. So this was going around the waves. And then apparently, uh, uh, now this is from Patrick McAfee. So <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Which, there's but, a lot of drama there too. You know? <laughs> there's a lot of drama there. We can get into that. But, but according to Pat, um, Aaron texted him and said that, I only get my house deep cleaned by one company, and it is my guy, and he would never talk to the press. So he's saying that it's fake, whoever came out and said Okay. I mean, most of this stuff is fake, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know, you all got to sift out the stuff, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, you never... I mean, if it's this guy, you know, you trust him, but I mean, still, you never know. I know. You know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, yeah, ever so like, he, I mean, because you know, he said after they got dropped, he was like, "I'm not touching a football for eight weeks or something." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So clearly, he's he's one of those guys that's like, "All right, off season, I'm done." <laughs> Take oh yeah, him. yeah. I mean, he doesn't live in Green Bay. Uh, I mean, he has a house there during the season, but he has a house yeah. in Malibu where he mm-hmm. actually lives. Yeah. Um, you know, what's crazy to me though is it's July 21st. They cannot trade him and him start for another team. How in the hell is he going to learn? I mean, I guess I mean, he's Aaron Rodgers, you know, he can do whatever. Oh, yeah. But... Like, they'll, they'll, I mean, it, it's amazing. Like, they'll learn quick. Yeah. They do it. They get it done. I don't know how, but they get but, it I done. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, they bro, do. you have a month. Yeah. Well, like, so learning the playbook and everything, like, 
they're you know their football minds are so like insane their iqs like football mm -hmm. iqs so insane that it's like i mean they probably pick up on it so fast they've been doing it their whole life mm -hmm. but like you know learning the plays and actually doing it and then also with new teammates that whole process like to do that and like you know within weeks mm -hmm. blows my mind um but yeah they get it done somehow yeah i mean they do get it done but it is crazy and i I mean, I think he's going to be in Green Bay. Uh, I think so, too. I think he's going to stay. I think this is all, like, he wants to just show that, like, he's obviously upset and they need to fix it. But I don't think he wants to leave. Yeah. Now, well, I mean, he may, but I don't think, like, I think he'd rather stay with them. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I say I think he's going to stay in Green Bay, but at the same time, nothing's going to change. Why would it? Green Bay yeah. says that they're okay with jordan love so why would they change yeah you know um it, it, you know it, it's just crazy but mm -hmm. i hope to see him in a green and gold uniform again yeah me too it'll be exciting He's been there so <laughs> yeah football season is officially 50 days out by the way yeah uh, so looking Perfect. forward to that one that's gonna be now, i mean now the basketball's over it's complete flip all into football now so Dude, we gotta get I, ready you know, it, it's gonna be so boring this next yeah, 50 days all that's on is like baseball now <laughs> know, we have the olympics coming up so that's gonna save us for the time being but mm -hmm. other than that it's just for like two baseball. weeks yeah and until only two weeks so and you know i i just i don't really get into the olympics that much but yeah, and I, mean, I fucking hate baseball. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. I mean, yeah, it's always on the TV, but it's never like, oh, you know, this, uh, you know, this event's on, gotta watch it. But it, you know, never. I'm. It's always gonna be on. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Well, Let's see. okay. I'm excited. So Olympics. This mm -hmm. is an insane story. Mm -hmm. So a Ugandan weightlifter. All right. He's on the Olympic team. They go to Tokyo. He flies there with his team. And then uh, as soon as they get there, they have to do like a, a qualifying uh, meet, like a competition. And mm -hmm. he does not qualify for the Olympics. He okay. doesn't qualify. Okay. So this guy disappears. And he leaves a note behind. And uh, he says that... He, he is like, he can find a better life in Tokyo and in Japan. So he was scheduled to fly home uh, on a Tuesday, but went missing from his hotel room where he left a note at the time saying he wished to stay in Japan and work uh, and that it would give him a better life than what Uganda could give him. Hmm. But more st uh, this originally broke last week, and then just more details of the story have been coming out. And uh, the guy has a wife and kids back in Uganda that he was just going to peace out and leave. He's just going to leave them? Yeah, just leave them. Um, oh, my he, gosh. And, uh, I mean, it's just crazy. So even So I started keeping track of the story last week when it broke to talk about this week on the podcast. Well, then yesterday there was a development in the story where uh, the Japanese police have found him. The, the they, police did? They found him, yeah. Like, <laughs> n nowhere close to Tokyo. Oh, my like, gosh. Dude just hopped on a train and got the hell out of town. <laughs> and they found him somewhere. I mean, I'm sure he stands out. A gigantic rip. Yeah, he's, a, he's a power lifter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Guy in Japan. Yeah. Oh my god, it's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. So they found him. They took him into custody. He is being brought back to Uganda. Yeah, because like he can't just stay there. No, no. Now yeah. he, he is there legally because he was given a visa to attend the Olympics. So he okay. did not break any international laws. Technically, he did break a he did break Olympic laws. But who gives a fuck about that? Um, <laughs> but the Ugandans are pissed at him, and he's going to have to pay for it once he gets. Back to you, yeah, yeah, that's not cool. That's but that's just insane that he's just gonna leave his family. Like, I thought when you said that he was just like 
you know, by himself. Like, he was like, oh, I hate it back home. No, he's got a whole family. It's insane. I know. I mean, it, it's just, it's the craziest story. And, you know, I feel for the guy, in, you know, in some ways, because, you know, I'm sure Uganda's got its problems. Um, yeah. I mean. You know, I don't know what Uganda's current state is, but I know it used to be uh, led by one of the most beautiful, brutal dictators um, in history. Um which, by the way, uh, recommendation for any listeners out there into history, watch How to Be a Tyrant on Netflix. It's phenomenal. There's an episode on Uganda. It's really good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little side note there. But yeah, just crazy story. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just, I can't, like, <laughs> you just, like, dips. Like, <laughs> I know, just dips out. So, the, when he, like, so they do the trials. I guess they so they did the trials in Tokyo. Is that how it works? Well, yeah, you know, because usually you um, usually you qualify before you even show up. I, I, they yeah. must do it differently for weightlifting. All I know is he had to qualify once he was there. Okay. And once he was already in Japan, he realized he was not gonna. He did not qualify, and he was not gonna be in the Olympics. And so mm-hmm. he was scheduled to go home uh, in a couple of days because of that. Mm-hmm. And he was just like. I can't do it. I'm so he just like it. he's like I can find he just a better had like life. A, you know, he just, after that he was just like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm just completely crazy. dipped out. That's crazy. That is crazy. Damn. Yeah. Speaking of like the Olympics and stuff, I was gonna mention Team USA. We talked about it last week. Um, how they're like losing, which you know, Team USA. This is basketball. Team USA basketball. I mean, they don't lose. They destroy teams by like forty points every time. Mm-hmm. But so I've seen footage of this going around of some of the games, like highlights and stuff. And it's because, like, the biggest reason is because of the refing. They're not calling stuff like they do in the NBA. It's like a lot harsher. So they're being like, this is a, a lot of contact, and they're not calling fouls. So t- you know, Team USA, the way NBA is right now. I mean, they're just, you know, they get touched, boom, it's a foul. Like, they just call it. And then, but in, you know, the Olympics right now, you get a little smack on the arm or anything, they're not calling that. Mm -hmm. So, that's a lot, it's a different, like, like, pace of play and everything. And they're Mm -hmm. struggling. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. And, like, like the bullshit things, like jumping into your foul, you know. You know, it's like taking in a regular shot motion and stuff like that. Yeah, that's not. It's gonna not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to work out there. So, which the NBA needs to crack down on that, anyway. Yeah, it's but. annoying to watch. I hate it. Yeah, they need, they need, they need to stop. I don't know what's going. Yeah, on, I mean, just but, ref like you do in yeah, the finals. So I, that should be. Yeah, that was know. good. It was completely different. It was really good. I know it's so it, different. Yeah, it was a lot of contact, and it was really fun to watch. Yeah. They didn't call the fouls like crazy. And yeah. But I hope I hope that, you know, Team USA can like figure it out by the time they start like playing for real. Cause I don't you know, we can't can't take an L in basketball. Come on. Hell no. Hell no you can't. <laughs> That's the United States sport right there. You can't <laughs> be losing. Yeah. No, you cannot be losing that. Uh, another interesting thing I saw this week was uh, – so there's this documentary that came out called uh, Roadrunner, I believe, and it's about Anthony Bourdain's life, the famous celebrity chef, author, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so what the controversy is is apparently Anthony Bourdain's voice can be heard throughout the film. But it's not actually him speaking. They used a voice cloning uh, program to make him say things that he never said. Um, mm-hmm. Which none of it's bad, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But just people are debating like how messed up that is mm-hmm. and how scary it is for future things. Yeah, that's um, uh, well, you know, they're doing so. They used like his voice. Like, did they take parts of his voice to, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. So you're saying, like, almost like a really good, um, like, compilation to, like, make it sound like he's Yeah, something. yeah, like they took parts of different soundtracks 
or something? I don't believe so. I believe it's literally an AI where you feed it okay. just a ridiculous amount of audio clips of him. And yeah. then you can type in whatever and it can conjure it. You so know, like CGI, but for audio. Yeah. Okay. Which is terrifying. Yeah, that's crazy. They can do, I mean, because then you could, you know, you could use that for things other than films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, you could get like, you know, the print, you know, they could fake a recording for that for political reasons or something yeah 100 percent. and you know i think you know it's so tricky with the first amendment and freedom of speech laws but you really do got to crack down on shit like this because you cannot Mm -hmm. have people being able to do like deep fakes and stuff yeah Um, yeah like i remember last year obama was in the white house somebody did a deep fake of him and that was that was five years yeah. ago. Um, <laughs> and so five years ago, technology was kind of shit, but it was still, it could pass. It could have passed for him. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's terrifying. And then, and, you know, five years later, they're going to mm-hmm. clean it up even more. And that's, oh, yeah. Got to, yeah. I don't mean, I don't know what to do about it because the technology I mean, we're growing so fast. I mean, it's nuts. Just everything. I it's. I mean, everything's growing so fast. But. And then you know another technology issue that's uh, been making the news thanks to uh, Idris Elba, who hopefully is the next James Bond. But um, he suggested. So you know, like on Twitter and Instagram, like verified people. You know, they have like the blue yeah, yeah. check or whatever. So apparently, that means that. These social media platforms have verified who they are. They've proven that that's who they are um, through like ID and stuff like that. Yeah. So Idris Elba has suggested that it should be mandatory that all social media accounts provide ID verification. Hmm. And he specifically suggested this in response to all the racism that the three African-American players on the England national team suffered at the end of the Euro cup loss from Um, like online trolls that just made like mm -hmm. these bullshit fake accounts and said horrible things. Yeah. Um, So the idea is, you know, if, if everybody's social media is verified, uh, then they won't, you can still say terrible things, but at least it is your, identity that you're saying it with yeah so so this is so he like, like wants people's accounts so like i mean like, i guess there's different ways to regulate this basically before you make an before you make an account right like but when you're making an account you get your id verified and everything mm-hmm. and then okay so like i guess I mean, I don't know if you'd like want people's ID on their account. I guess you could probably hide that for privacy purposes, obviously. But just yes. make sure that they're like a real person and everything. Mm-hmm. So like when you make an account for like a bank or an online oh. thing to like trade stocks or whatever, you have to have your like ID and social security number and everything to prove that it's you because it's your money mm-hmm. and everything. So like something like that, that's interesting to think about because social media is so important now that you know, that may be something that happens, you know, I mean, it's, it's social media is like our life. You yeah. Know? I mean, it, it's going to be really hard to get done here in the United States because, um, well, all the social media platforms are here. And so mm-hmm. they're going to be able to hide behind all of our bill of rights, you know, like we take privacy yeah. and stuff to such a high esteem and rightfully so, you know, it's important, Yeah. but I think it's a fantastic idea because it would, it would help protect like kids who are being, you know, catfished and, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, your ID would be hidden from people. It's not like they just go to your profile and see your driver's license. Yeah, yeah. It's it's all on the back end. You know, the social media companies yeah. just check and make sure that hey, you say you're, uh, you know, like they say you're 21. Are you actually 21? You know, mm-hmm. you know, just to that, that is something. Okay, so I've actually 
I haven't thought about it for social media, but that like that stuff needs to happen for like online dating apps. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that like this is becoming a problem where like sixteen year olds are making like a tender mm-hmm. and then they match up with people and meet them and then people are getting in trouble for that when really there needs to be some blame on these apps because there's no way like you don't have to prove your or your like age at all you can just say you're 18 so like obviously you know the people should get in trouble if they're messing with someone who's not of age but at the same time they're kind of like getting tricked into it a little bit because you know it's their 18 or up on the app and so like i've been saying like it's not completely their fault like they don't you know these apps need to have you know some blame on that yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a case-by-case uh, issue for sure. But, yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. Like, I feel like every uh, every week I read multiple stories, you know, of that. And it's um, always, like, always online dating. Yeah, it's, it's like, always. Because, it's all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah so that's, you know, that kind of... I mean, I definitely think it should be on that for, like, online dating. So I guess it's not much different for social media. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, not, like, as serious per se. But, you know, it's, I mean, that's, I mean, it's a pretty good idea. I think if they did do that, like, the social media platforms did that, it would probably have to be involved with the government in some way to mm-hmm. make sure that they're doing it correctly because having all these social because you know everyone has like tons of different social media sites so they you'd you'd be sending your information Mm -hmm. all over the place so you have to make sure it's safe for sure oh yeah yeah i mean it it gets yeah it gets very complicated yeah yeah, it'd it'd definitely be a very long process if they were to do that for sure but i think it's a fantastic idea um and it would help you know curb all these troll accounts and just you know all yeah, that because i mean on instagram especially on instagram it's insane there's so many fake accounts mm-hmm. it's like you go i mean every comment section is just filled with a bunch of crap that you gotta sift through if you want to look at anything you just don't even you can't even look at comments anymore yeah it's crazy so, yep yeah, idris i uh, i agree with you sounds like we both agree with you yeah sounds like a great idea and he, he does seem to be getting a lot of support from mm-hmm. people with this idea um, as well. Yeah, that seems uh, seems pretty cool. See what yeah. happens going forward with that coming out in the public. Like, you know, he's a pretty popular guy, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's completely I, adored. <laughs> yeah. So if he gets a lot of support from that, we'll, we'll see. Get some power, powerful people under that. Could be a movement. Yeah. Could do it, so. Um, and some other sports news, uh, Texas and Oklahoma University are looking to leave the Big 12 and join the SEC. What do you think? So I haven't heard the story, um, but it's, I, I just like, I mean, I feel, haven't they been in that conference for like a like long, long time? Like, uh. I mean, I don't know the legacy there, but yes, I would assume it's quite. Uh, it goes back quite a long ways. Um, yeah, teams teams moving around like conferences mm-hmm. is not something that happens often, but especially the SEC. I don't think many teams are moving to and from the SEC much, just because of like their you know the SEC's football dominance is so powerful that like you know it's a big deal if a team comes in there. Obviously, it's going to. Sh- Take everything up, but mm-hmm. that's uh, well, I think that's what they're looking for, Oklahoma and Texas. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, the Big 12 used to be, you know, they still are in some aspects, but uh, they want to get back to what they were and, and go to the SEC. And honestly, I, I'm all for it. Um, uh, I think it's awesome. I love both of those colleges, I think they're. <laughs> awesome to watch they have great cultures texas has been one of my biggest uh i've been a texas fan ever since i was a child um there's some family friends that live uh, down there and so they always gave me stuff as a kid like texas university uh, swag so mm-hmm. I, i'm all for it join the sec yeah 
come closer to North Carolina. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy for like basketball too, because you know Big Twelve is big on basketball, so it'll yeah. shake that up too. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, this whole big thing. If the, the teams are changing up where they are in the conferences, it's gonna you know it may help them cool. in basketball. That's that's true because SEC I mean, is kind of ass at basketball. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so yeah. If you have, you know, they could just go in there and start. They'd maul one in the SEC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd almost be unfair, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that, and then also how long would that take to take? Yeah, effect? there's no way that would be. This season, no, there's no way it wouldn't be that quick. I mean, it takes because the scheduling they get the scheduling out so early, and mm-hmm. you know, the NCAA has to uh, deal with all that stuff. So, you know, they're gonna have to, it's gonna take like at least a year for sure. Which, by the way, I bought tickets to App State ECU football game. Yo, mm-hmm. sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna. Go with some family, and then we have a family reunion um, that we're going to go to after that. It's like the next day in the area. Awesome. So That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could go, but we're probably going to go to a different one that's in uh, at App. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to figure that out. But that atmosphere is going to be crazy. Bank of America Stadium. Uh-huh. It's going to yeah. be packed. Yeah, my... Uh... One of my family members who's in the Pirate Club, uh, they bought the tickets mm-hmm. and um, for us all. And then so we're going to be in the ECU section. Um, <laughs> I'll be the only <laughs> one. Not gonna be te- you're not going to be cheering for ECU. Yeah, they, <laughs> they might come after me. They don't play around. They might. Yeah. you got to be careful. <laughs> uh, Wear an app putty ECU hat or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. We bleed black and gold. <laughs> Yeah, I hope App yeah. murders EC. Yeah, I hope App wins. They they struggled a little bit last year. I hope that was just like COVID. I don't know. Yeah, hot take though. EC is gonna win. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I, I they got better last year, but I gotta go. Gotta go with the Mountaineers. I think App is gonna win. Hey, Especially, I hope so. I th- I think they're gonna thrive down there too, but we'll see. Oh, and Charlotte with the energy? Yeah. yeah but ECU um, will probably be the same way, so I don't know how much that's going to change anything. But You know, I remember going to an East Carolina-Virginia Tech game in mm-hmm. the Bank of America Stadium, uh, mm-hmm. which for those of y'all who don't know, that's uh, the Carolina Panther Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't remember how old I was. I want to say it was 2008, so I was nine. And holy shit, it was electric. I mean, yeah. it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It, it was such a cool experience. And so I'm... Uh, yeah, because Virginia I, Tech's not far. No, no, not so, far at all. Yeah, that's what's going to be so awesome about the AC app game is that, like, you know, they, they're going to be there. You know, they can just get there that day. So there's going to be tons of people flooding in mm-hmm. the short, so it's going to be crazy right. <laughs> have the east versus the west do you think there will be more <laughs> ecu fans there or do you think there will be more appalachian fans there because it's definitely oh. closer for app fans to get there it is closer for app fans it's a lot closer but i know there's definitely more ecu fans just because ecu is such a bigger school mm-hmm. so i think there may be more ecu fans but i know that there's so many app fans in charlotte like so many people that graduate from app like live in in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Well, same with ECU. That's true. Yeah. I guess they're, you know, from all over, but I, I think it will be fairly even, but mm-hmm. there may be more ECU. I don't think there'll be more app than ECU. Uh, I can't decide. I keep going back and forth. First of all, every person I talk to that lives in Boone, North Carolina is going to this game. Yeah. Every single one of them is yeah, going. I mean, no one's, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> Boone will have a population of five. <laughs> on this yeah. date, uh, uh, the Thursday before Labor they're Day, they're gonna shut down uh, the town. <laughs> Make sure dude, everyone gets down there. Everybody is going. I mean, it is ridiculous. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, 
But I do, I do think there's going to be more purple in the stands mm-hmm. than black. Yeah. Um, I think there's a good chance of that happening. Yeah. I mean, ECU fans are diehard. They are so – I mean, I grew up in that culture. They are loyal as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate to say it, but they may be more loyal than Afghans. I think – I don't be. know if they're – I would say I don't know if they're more loyal, but they're definitely more crazy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a so, good way to put that it. Makes, that makes a difference for sure. That is a good way to put it. Because <laughs> loyal, you're right. Loyal is the wrong word because – ECU has been shit for the past three seasons, and they've had an average attendance of 14,000 a game. <laughs> when their stadium seats 60,000. So, loyal yeah. is definitely not the right word. And then, but, like, app, you know, they, I mean, I think it's only. Fill the only, house every game. Yeah, it's only 30,000, but they're completely full every yeah, game. Yeah, It doesn't matter who they're playing. Yeah, every game sells yeah. out. And the energy is mm-hmm. electric. The town shuts down for the game. Yeah. Great culture. Uh, great mm-hmm. culture. North Carolina football is a unique culture. It for is. Sure. So schools. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So excited for that game. Yeah. Uh, so cool they're doing that. Mm-hmm. And they're going to play a couple times uh, over this next decade. I think they're scheduled for four or five games mm-hmm. uh, over the next 10 years. So, yeah. Going to spark a little rivalry there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. East and yeah. West. <laughs> yeah. Did awesome. you did you see um, Jeff Bezos launch into space? I didn't see it, but I, I heard about it. And he was up there way longer. I don't remember the other guy's name that went it, but he was up there longer. So I'm Richard sure. Branson is the other guy. Yeah, Branson. That's right. He was I'm up there about. for like two seconds. Did you see him launch? Yeah, yeah. You you saw Richard launch. You didn't yeah, see yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Okay, so. Richard's launch was some bullshit. It was on a plane. Yeah, he was on yeah. a nice plane. Yeah. That went up, dropped the booster, or I guess that want to be the booster. The plane's a booster. It dropped the rocket, and then it took him out to where he touched, like, the tip of yeah, the atmosphere. Was... Yeah. And then came down. Jeff's was actually cool. It actually felt like a, a – because he was actually in a thing that stands straight up and shoots off like an – He ash, was in like, a legitimate rocket. Yeah, he was in an actual rocket. Now, it did look like a penis. This has been breaking the internet. <laughs> I heard about that. Dude, okay, yeah. I saw the picture of the rocket. <laughs> Dude, because it was everywhere on, online. Like, people yeah. were laughing about – how it looked is it so funny. Like, why did they make it like that? <laughs> that is hilarious. Because it, it doesn't look aerodynamic at all. No, no rockets have ever looked like that. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what it was. Um, it doesn't make any sense. But that is hilarious. Um, yes, the internet's been having a great time at that. But Yeah. I just thought it was funny that Richard Branson's was like, because nobody knows who Richard Branson is. Yeah, I didn't. I thought I it was just funny. Know who he was actually like legitimately, I've never heard of him. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. he's definitely a, a, co- a very accomplished guy. No, yeah, part. he's. I mean, definitely very wealthy and everything. But I actually mm-hmm. didn't know who he was. But before. it was hilarious to me. Like um, his launch looked like a damn paper airplane, you know? Yeah. And then Jeff Bezos is taken off like an astro- astronaut. It's like such a parallel between the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm watching it right now. Uh, got a clip of it. Which one? It's, yeah, it's Bezos. Bezos. Yeah, it's a legit yeah. rocket. Like, yeah, it is a legit rocket. Yeah, he's going straight up. It's really cool how they put like whenever they're showing the the um you know rockets fly off and everything. They have like all the numbers, how fast they're going. It's like 2,000 mm-hmm. miles an hour. It's insane. You know, I thought it was funny who he had accompanying him on the ride. Like, if you're Jeff Bezos, why would you even auction off tickets to join you? You're rich as hell. You don't need the money. Just bring people you care about. Because you just had to share this insane experience with some random 82-year-old woman and then an <laughs> 18-year-old rich kid. Like, what? I, yeah, I don't I don't get it. Like now maybe his family didn't want to go because of the dangers of it and all. That's true. 
But I just, I, I, that, that was so weird to me. And his brother was there as well. But still, you got these two random strangers with you. It's just so weird to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, I know some people were like, so it's like they're paying like millions of dollars. These uh, people that hopped on, I think, mm-hmm. right? Like they're. I don't know how much, money. but yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I think it's someone. I think some of the names weren't disclosed. Maybe they are now, but I remember one time it was like there was a twenty million dollar ticket. Someone paid like twenty million to hop on. The, so these are like billionaires. They're all billionaires, obviously. Yeah. But it's like absurd amounts of money to go on. It was like ten minutes. <laughs> that is absurd. But yeah, it's weird that he's letting them hop on. He doesn't even know them. Any he, yeah, he obviously doesn't need the money. But yeah. maybe this is the future market that they're going to do. They're going to have space travel. You can go up and pay millions of dollars and you can go to space. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, for sure it's going to be a future market. I mean, I think they have a waiting list already of like 200 people. Oh, that's um, crazy. With like some very big names already on that mm-hmm. list. Like, I don't want to name drop and be wrong, but I do feel like Leonardo DiCaprio oh, is on that that's list. interesting. And there are... There were a couple other actors and actresses, but he's the only one I remember for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, there were a couple that were on the list already. Um, yeah. And these were all for Bezos's rockets, not for Virgin Galactic, uh, Richard Branson's company. Mm-hmm. An actual so, rocket. <laughs> yes, an actual experience. It's not a nice private jet flight. <laughs> Uh, so back to some NFL news for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Irvin, famous guy, right? you know, mm-hmm. he said that he was specifically calling out the Dallas Cowboys for not meeting the COVID nineteen vaccine threshold that the NFL set. So basically, the NFL has this rule where eighty five percent of your team must be vaccinated in order to uh, like release yourself of COVID-19 restrictions. Okay. And the Dallas Cowboys, of course, <laughs> are the only ones who have not met this threshold. Texas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Of Dallas, course it's the, Texas. They're only- literally. <laughs> yeah. Could not get more stereotypical here. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But I Houston's mean, even- got it. Done right. Oh, Houston got their shit under control. Yeah, it's the damn Dallas Cowboys, America's team. I hate that they call themselves that. <laughs> With Jerry Jones as the damn. Yes, everyone loves mm-hmm. Jerry Jones. Uh, you know, with the uh, air quotes. Um. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so the Dallas Cowboys are the only ones who haven't met this threshold, and Michael Irvin was tearing into them. Saying that, like, you cannot be a serious player and not get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I I agree with the. I mean, we're both vaccinated and everything, mm-hmm. and you should go get vaccinated if you're not already. Help us lower the curve because cases are, they're going up right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they were going up last week, and they're actually still rising. Um, which, which, real quick, I've known a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. in the past two weeks. Who are vaccinated and they've gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely if you're playing, if, if you're like a professional athlete and everything, I don't see why you wouldn't want to get it because there are people that have gotten it that like it has shut them down. Like they can't, it's hurt them so bad. They can't like play sports anymore. Like mm-hmm. Some people, I mean, it's rare, but it's happened. Like, Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I get that statistically you're overwhelmingly probably going to be all right. Mm-hmm. But you're a professional athlete and your body is your income. Yeah. Despite whatever you want to believe. And yeah, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah, there's a chance way. it fucks up your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, if you have to miss two weeks of an NFL season because you're yeah. COVID 19 bullshit, that changes. It's the whole team season if you're the right player. If that mm-hmm. is two weeks, oh shit. Yeah. Compl- Which, I mean, if, yeah. I mean, they're then you're. I mean, they're basically out. Two. They're going to lose two weeks. Yeah, which I'm fine with. You know, give the Washington football <laughs> team a chance. You know, fuck <laughs> yes, the Cowboys. 
You have a football team fan here. Um, well, I should say I... Which is crazy. They still don't have a name yet, but anyway. I know. I am a Redskins fan, um, I should say, but... Yeah. They are... I did actually see that they're entertaining the idea of the Washington Wolfpack. That's interesting. It's, um, it's it, weird because, you know, NC State... Yes, yeah. That's close to home, but... Yeah, very it's funny to think about an NFL team would be that. But yeah, it's better than nothing, so... You know, I guess it's better than nothing. Well, first of all, it sounds badass. I like the way it sounds, but then when I think about it, there's not a single damn wolf in Virginia. <laughs> That's no relation to the state or team at all. A wolf has never lived in Virginia, ever. <laughs> I, I mean, it just... I <laughs> How did they come up with that one? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I wish what they should have done is they should have kept their name until they found a new one and just made a smooth transition mm-hmm. into you know what they're going to be now, and then it would have been fine. But and it it wouldn't have made a difference if they kept the Redskins another year. I mean, they would have been okay, and then they changed their name when they fi- figure something out. And that's what future teams should do. They need, if they're going to have to change their name or something, mm-hmm. they need to figure something out and then switch it over because they're becoming a laughing stock that their name is the football team. Yeah. I mean, they're losing so many fans. They're losing me. I mean, it's ridiculous. I don't want to yeah. call it a football team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, it sucks. I have all this gear that says Washington Redskins on it. That does suck. What the hell am I going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean,. I mean... <laughs> It's not the same. At least they kept the same colors, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna. I know. Get like a you know duct tape over the top, and then write you know whatever the new name is. <laughs> it's absurd. It's just what they should have done was they should have met with uh, like Native American groups and try to come up with a a name that they, they felt like have, they could have honored them made like awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that they felt honored their legacy. Uh, that would have been badass. That would have been really cool. They, sh- I mean, yeah, they should have done that. Yeah, but that will never happen. I also yeah. saw the Washington Warriors as a potential- potentiality. Uh, I hate that. I don't want them to name it that, but. Yeah. They, sh- they need to make something different. Yeah. Like, there's all these samey names. They need to, I mean, they- they're paying people. Mm-hmm. They're probably they're probably paying a lot of people, and they so they should be able to come up with something cool. They're definitely paying a lot of people. Yeah. So. Actually, uh, I met a lawyer for the uh, a former lawyer for the Washington Redskins at the time. A musical mm-hmm. guy. nice guy. Cool. He, he works here at the university now. He's the uh, lawyer for at the athletic department. So that's cool. Um. Did you hear about the Atlanta Falcons kicker who had his car stolen? What? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't remember the guy's name. But you know who I'm talking about. The Asian guy, the kicker for the Atlanta Falcons. He had yeah, an incredible se- name- season. Oh, I'm not going to say his name and say something. <laughs> yeah. wrong, but don't pull a Steve at Ace Smith. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. But, <laughs> but yeah, he's the kicker for the Falcons. He got yeah, his yeah. car stolen? Yes. So, it's Atlanta. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently it was a Jeep that he had and he had it parked and it was stolen. And so he comes out on social media and he says like, Hey, you know, what, what the hell? Why would anybody steal my car? And he's like, I don't even care. Just bring my car back so I can get my cleats out of it. Oh. He's like, you can keep the car. I just want my cleats. And that I am just so confused by that. Though those are probably like his cleats that he like. I don't know. They may. I don't know if they're game cleats. I don't know if that's his thing. But I mean, mm-hmm. kickers are probably like real, like religious with their cleats. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I know kickers are very superstitious about things like yeah. that. Very, you know, routine. Uh-huh. But also, I mean, it was just like, bro, you want this guy to come back with your stolen car, drop off your cleats? I mean, you well, yeah, that's obviously not going to happen. <laughs> drive away, like, and also, like, I don't know. To me, it felt like the way he was he was talking about on social media, it felt like 
He literally said, just bring back my cleat so I can go kick. <laughs> it's like, bro, you're an NFL player. You were star- one of the best kickers last season. Yeah. But you can afford to go out there and buy a new pair of cleats. Oh, definitely. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it was just so weird it's, to me. It's gotta, he's got to be, like, weird about it with his cleats he uses or something. Because that, that is... Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, kickers are like soccer players. They, you know, they get real specific. They need that kangaroo leather or something, you know. Yeah, you never know what they're going to do. Like, to they hit got the ball. Some, yeah. Yeah. I have like, like a lucky nickel in their yeah. shoelace. You never, you know. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, kicking, NFL kicking is extremely routine. It's like a golf swing, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's got to be perfect. So they're probably all up in the routine and stuff. So that may be a big deal to him. He needs those specific cleats. I don't know. Yeah. But he can definitely afford some. I know, yeah. It, it, it just felt weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, what were you saying? So we mentioned Stephen A. Smith earlier. Um, yeah. So there's an update. It's like a small update. First of all, he's still not receiving any repercussions about what he said. Um, I'm shocked. A week or two ago, and all his shows on ESPN and everything, I think, are still going. Like, and it's crazy. But I mean, it's just frustrating to see. Like, you know, it, some people can say some things and then others can say others and it's like we need you know i don't know what to call it but like you know it's just crazy that you know what he said was not cool at all Mm -hmm. and you know people i mean it's kind of like not even in the news now it's kind of done like you know push it aside and everything's still continuing so Mm -hmm. yeah um you know, I do agree that uh, the reaction has been, it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been applied to everyone, you know, the same. Um, yeah. But I also agree that it really shouldn't matter. Like, I kind of agree that he hasn't had any repercussions. Oh, yeah? You know, I don't think anybody should get called out for that. I think it's absurd that some people would get called out for that. Um. I think if you, for for a living, talk on live television, you're going to say dumb shit. This is true. That's just what's going to happen. That's true. And you can't fault anybody for just speaking what comes to their mind or just, you know, right off their head, they're being animated or whatever for a show. I'm sure there are going to be countless horrible, dumb things I'm going to say on this podcast. (laughs) You know? I I just don't think anybody that is going to put themselves out there online or for television or whatever, I, you know, I don't think as long as something's good, you know, where it's clearly, you know, hateful or intentional, mm-hmm. I don't really think you should uh, perjure somebody for just what they say off the top of their head mm-hmm. on, on live TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, makes, you know, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I don't like Stephen A. Smith personally. He's annoying. Um, but I'm kind of glad that he didn't have any repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. Even though what he said was, you know, not the coolest thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I still have no idea what he was trying to say. It made no sense. <laughs> I mean, that's also true. It's a lot of gibberish sometimes. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's saying. Screaming. Otani can't be. Well, I mean, he was calling out the MLB saying you can't have your poster boy not speak English or something like that. Yeah, say, I don't get it. What are you trying to say, bro? Well, because, like, there's so many people in the MLB that don't speak English because mm-hmm. there are lots of people from South America that play baseball. Mm-hmm. So, uh, tons of them can't speak English because it's not their native language and it takes time to learn how to speak English. So, yeah. I mean, it's not just going to happen overnight. And you can't, you know, control... Uh, MLB can't control who their poster boy is because he uh, can't control who's going to be amazing. 
Yeah, and then, you know, I mean, the, if the MLB started enforcing English, you know, tutoring lessons on their players, I'm sure they'd catch yeah, hella well, flack for that one. Do that. It's just, that's yeah, dumb. That's so, so dumb. it's just like, what the hell? I mean, you, you can't have it both ways. Yeah. But, you know, I'm glad uh, you're complete uh, woke on Stephen A. Smith for that one. Um, they exercised some human decency <laughs> and uh, gave him the benefit of the doubt that he said something dumb off the top of his head. We'll have to see what else he says in the future because there will be some more things. I'm mm-hmm. sure he's yes. all over the place. He is all over the place. <laughs> Um, did he hear the uh, uh, Black Rifle Coffee um, news? I I don't know too many details, but update me. Okay, all right. So uh, for listeners who don't know, uh, Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-owned and operated uh, coffee company uh, based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. And they make excellent coffee. You should give it a try. And they do a lot for veterans uh, to try and help them transition out of the military, all that good stuff. So they're a good company. Uh, we're big big coffee drinkers and uh, big fans of theirs like to support them. But uh, so Black Rifle Coffee has had a couple not so good PR things. For one, that Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, kid, do you remember him? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that, that was a couple, deal. couple months back. He, I believe, shot and killed two people. And he mm-hmm. was wearing, he wasn't wearing it when it happened, but a video or a picture came out on Facebook of a coffee t shirt. Mm-hmm. So that came out. People are like, oh, you know, screw Black Rifle Coffee. You know, they're a bunch of racists and all that kind of stuff. Which, you know, as a company, you can't control who wears your t-shirts. That's like saying if a guy in a Nike shirt shot and killed somebody. Yeah, it's, it's no different. Nike, yeah, yeah, it's like, like come on. Yeah, so. Come on. And, and then, so, it, it started all again on January 6th when the, uh, you know, when the um, protesters stormed the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Or the rioters stormed the Capitol. They weren't really protesting much. Um, yeah. But one of the guys who broke into the actual congressional chamber, he was photographed wearing a hat and it was a black rifle coffee hat. Oh, and so, so it came out that again. That killed them. Yes, Another, that killed them in the oh, press. Man. Yes, that's not good either because that's everywhere. Even I know. Than, yeah. So then the New York Times reached out to Evan Hafer, the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee, and said they wanted to do an interview of him and uh, get his take on everything. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they do the interview. Um, they go to this uh, event that uh, Black Rifle Coffee was organizing to help uh, severely injured veterans um, get into the outdoors through like archery and stuff where uh, they take uh, take these very wounded people out, and give them great experiences and all. It's a very cool program. Uh, um, and he brings the New York Times journalists around to show them what Black Rifle Coffee is all about. Well, the article just came out last week, and they didn't write about any of that. Instead, they just wrote about uh, Black Rifle Coffee taking the Catholic, uh, a specific angel from Catholicism, and saying that like it's white supremacist. And then the article was talking about how Black Rifle Coffee hates conservatives. They don't even like their own base. <laughs> um, and they start taking quotes from the CEO saying like, oh, I hate these people. They're all just a bunch of racists and anti-Semitists. I would pay them to not support my company and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Um, so the article is just insane. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all over the place. Y'all got to read it. It's crazy. It goes in all kinds of details. Well, the CEO, Evan Hafer, released a what I thought was a phenomenal video. It was a 
uh, seven minute video. You know, it's not like he released some statement, you know, some bullshit that CEOs hide behind so that they didn't even write their lawyer wrote it. He records himself live on Instagram, by the way, and uh, speaks on every point that the article makes. And yeah, I would suggest y'all go listen to it if you're interested in it. And if you like coffee, uh, give Black Rock Coffee a taste. Yeah, it's very good coffee for sure. Yeah. But it's just, it's a crazy debacle. But yeah, that's been dragged through the mud. Hope uh, nothing too bad comes out of that because definitely like the product and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully everything gets fixed. Uh, but I don't know. Sounds crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And you know what? Let's uh, let's stop this politi- politicization of America. You know, I'm a liberal guy, but you know what? I drink Black Rifle coffee and it's damn good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You don't have to be a creative to drink a company's coffee. Yeah. Like, come I, on, people. Yeah, it's, you gotta, uh, you, you can't just stay strict with everything. I mean, that's the same way with anything. You mm-hmm. know, if you do it for politics, you should do it for you know any other disagreement you have i mean you couldn't you know if you have a fight with someone then boom you disagree one thing don't be friends with them anymore you can't do that Mm -hmm. you you gotta you're gonna have disagreements with people and disagreements with you know how companies do certain things but obviously if they do terrible things it's one thing but if you know i mean oh that's another good example of that's like Chick Fil A years ago came out with the, you know, the gay marriage, very anti, yeah, anti gay marriage stuff, and people are still eating plenty of Chick Fil A now. <laughs> so you know, it's you know, yeah, can disagree and hopefully try and change some things, but don't shut them down necessarily. Yeah, I mean, voting with your dollar is certainly a real thing. And, Absolutely. You know, it definitely is. And I'm all for supporting, you know, companies that, you know, support values you stand for. But, you know, just this idea of, oh, well, that's just a conservative company. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, unless they're assholes who just, you know, don't believe in, you know, basic, you know, things that are widely right. accepted today. You can right. support them. Yeah. 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 You know, Black Rifle Coffee is just veterans, you know, trying to make a living, separate themselves from, from government service. And you got to respect that. They're good guys and they're doing good work. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. It's a cool company for sure. And I'm rooting for them. <laughs> yep. Um, do you have any other uh, big stories you want to talk about? I got a couple quick little things. Uh yeah, I was going to talk about um so this week, you know, we're on vacation and everything. Um mm-hmm. me and my family. And Monday was horribly rainy day, like raining constantly all throughout the day. Couldn't go to the beach or anything. So, and we saw the new Black oh, Widow shit. movie. How was Marvel, that? And uh it was good. I liked it. It was cool to see uh see how they, you know, added uh the Black Widow have her own movie and everything, and it ties in into the storyline. Um, I'm mean, a little spoiler, not for the movie, but just like I don't know the timeline and everything. So, it, like, it happens in the middle of like Civil War, um, okay? Because obviously she's you know, you know dead now, but mm-hmm. so this back during civil war um so but it, it was good i liked it a lot of action the action scenes were like it was also almost like michael bay filmed them there were so many explosions and everything but it was cool there was some dry humor in there um it kind of overdid it a little bit sometimes it was like not funny but mm-hmm. it was it was still a good movie I enjoyed it we all enjoyed it i think so mm-hmm. cool very yeah. cool you know that's the one thing i that's the one thing I hate about Marvel movies is uh, dry humor. Well, no, I mean I love dry humor. It's just the shitty humor. I mean they just like try oh, to be too funny, just, like overdoing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes movies like and Marvel definitely tries to do that because it's hard to. I don't know. I try to like 
a lot of their movies they kind of try to appeal too much to a younger yes. audience, which is difficult when you know they have such a big audience. Like everyone's going to see the movie, so it's kind of hard. I mean, I mean, I'll give them like a little bit of the doubt here. It's difficult to cover all those ages because the humor. I mean, <laughs> humor is completely different for a thirteen-year-old than a thirty-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it can be bad sometimes times and this movie definitely had that like you you probably would not find a lot of the things funny in the movie to be honest Um, yeah (laughs) yeah i mean i'm really starting to get out of marvel i just i just don't enjoy it that much anymore yeah i mean i you watch captain america right the Mm -hmm, show mm -hmm. but that's that's the only one you've watched i think right I watched wandavision as well oh yeah you did watch that one that's right so loki's the one that just finished up i mean i've yes. seen all i'm like i watch marvel all the time <laughs> but um yeah loki was crazy um but it, the f- next phase of what they're doing is going to be it's going to be completely different mm-hmm. I mean, obviously end game kind of finished off that whole wave of superheroes so what they're doing next is going to be a lot different yeah so yeah, I don't think I'll see another superhero movie until uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman comes out. So <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Yeah, that's gonna be a long time. Oh, actually, Venom Two. I'm gonna see Venom Two. Oh yes, I'm excited. That's for gonna that be one. awesome. Because the first one was really good, mm-hmm. and I love the Woody. Hum- you now the humor in that one is funny. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah, because it's a darker movie. Yeah, yeah. That's so how I feel like with the Marvel works. movies. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the Marvel movies now, it's just like, all right, this is literally made for a 13-year-old. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I, I can't get into them as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah, they got a, it, yeah, definitely harder to cover, you know, younger audience. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Venom 2, I'm excited. Doubt. I don't, do you know, let me find out when it comes out. Let me look okay. it up. I want to say it's September. Venom 2 release date. September 24th. So it's coming up real quick. Bingo. There we go. Yep. You nailed it. Coming up. That will probably be the first movie I will see in theaters. Um, yeah. I saw... It's like... Oh, God. Probably like a month ago almost now. Fast 9. Yeah. Not a good movie. Atrocious. Um not a good movie. Uh, I could have told you that. <laughs> yeah, well, I knew it wasn't going to get big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh Yeah, that was my first movie, but like no one was in the theater. We went on a, a Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so no one was there. That's the move uh, though. That is. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We basically yeah. had the theater to ourselves. So it was awesome. I remember this is how nerdy me and my friends are. I remember Eighth grade prom. Um, me and my five guy friends. Uh, we left our prom early to go see Iron Man 3, I believe, mm-hmm. um, in the movie theater. And it was really late when we went. It was probably like 10 or 11 at night. And we were the only ones in there. <laughs> So that was our prom night. We went to prom for probably 30 minutes and then we and then left. Went to Iron Man 3. <laughs> in our tuxes. Yeah. And oh then my gosh. went That's to see hilarious. Iron Man 3 and we had a blast because we had to place ourselves. We were just running around. And shit. <laughs> That's so That's fun. Funny. Put yeah. a bunch of kids in an empty movie theater. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, for real. Goofing off the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you got anything else? I think that's all I had on on my notes there. Uh, right. Uh, I've just got a few quick things. Uh, first and foremost, it's Ernest Hemingway's birthday. Yo. <laughs> yeah, today's so. Uh, you know, read some literature or pour a stiff drink. You know. <laughs> Either way, you're supporting. Yes, you're supporting the legend. The, the memory of. The greatest 20th century American writer. And also, if anybody, uh, even if you're not into literature, 
Google interesting facts about Ernest Hemingway. He is a fascinating human. Uh, I wish Joe Sackies was around back then because he would have been the most interesting man in the world, uh, without a doubt. Um, to give that a Google, you won't be disappointed. Um, golf. British Open ended on Sunday. Oh, yes. I um, did watch that. Yeah, Colin Murakawa. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It um, is. Thing can't uh, major win, I think. so. It is his second major win, and he's also now the only... He's the second player. Tiger Woods did it as well uh, to win. He's only ever appeared in two majors, and he's won both of them. Oh, really? Tiger's the only other person that's done that. Wow. Yeah. Or, or or it's the first time he's appeared. So, like, this was his first time appearing in the British Open, and he won it. Okay, and then I got you. I don't, I don't remember the other one uh, that it was. I want to say it was U.S. Open. I could be wrong about that. But his first time um, at that one, he won it. But, yeah, he's the only person who, on his first time appearing in a major, has won it. Yeah, so just show up Tiger. won the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Yeah, good um, for him. I was pulling for Harold Varner at the British Open, but he did not make the cut. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. But after after the cut, I was pulling for Murakawa the whole way. Oh yeah. Me too. Yeah, he I wanted great. Impressive. Who stays in? I feel bad for him because he keeps like he's always in the lead at these majors and then mm-hmm. he just falls out. Yeah, that's happened multiple times, I think. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Um, yeah. I hope he and does Jordan, get one at some point. Yeah, and Jordan Spieth, uh, he finished really strong. Mm-hmm. He came in second. He did uh, finish strong. I really don't give a uh, shit about Jordan, but yeah, he did play well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing I got is, is a... Y'all should look this up because um, it's a fantastic video. It's very interesting. Um, there is a video... So Google um, Afghan president rocket fired during prayer. If you look that up, you'll find a video of probably 50 men, uh, all Afghan men, praying outside the presidential palace in Afghanistan. And in the middle of their prayer, uh, rockets start flying in all around them outside of the palace. And it's... It it's crazy, and it's just such a beautiful thing. Um, to such, it just illustrates to what esteem they hold their religion and how deep it goes. Um, but basically, rockets start flying in all around them, and they don't move. They keep praying. Um, they don't break their prayer, and it's just incredible to see one guy in the group does. He stands up. He's like, "What in the hell?" We got to get out of here. But <laughs> every, and he like runs off. So it's kind of comic relief as well. But everybody else is just so steadfast, so devout. Um, and it's pretty remarkable to see. So, yeah, that's crazy. Just yeah. how devout, you know, it they is. Are. And, you know, I mean, that's, I know I would, I mean, Take instinct, off. yeah, instinct is get covered, but yeah. It's, so amazing yeah uh, it, it, it's that. it's crazy, crazy. It, yeah it's it's impressive in a lot of ways um so very cool that's what i'll leave you with so uh so you're all out all right all right so yeah thanks everybody for listening um this is take the stairs podcast and uh you know, please give us a follow on Twitter at Take the Stairs Podcast or email us at Take the Stairs Podcast at gmail.com. So, yeah, really appreciate you all listening and uh, go out there, live your life, you know, treat people with kindness and uh, always take the stairs. We're out. Thank you all so much. Peace out, guys. All right. I think that one was. A million times better. Definitely.